Okay, it's 4.30. Uh, we're able to get our, get our Tuesday, June 14, 2016 Board of Education meeting. Uh, first, we need to approve our agenda. So moved. Uh, first and second, any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, now we'll move into the recognition portion. Uh, for DECA and Skills USA, I guess, I guess that's me. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, we would like to uh, recognize some of our students here in the district. DECA prepares emerging leaders and entrepreneurs in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management. Missouri's DECA services are, services are an integral part of instruction that motivates students to increase their leadership and creative abilities. We would like to recognize at this time Ms. Emily Braden. Emily was chosen, just have a scene right here, right here, as District 12 Leadership Delegate. Winning this delegate position allowed Emily to participate in the Leadership Academy at the DECA International Career and Development Conference in Nashville. We'd like to say congratulations to you, Emily. And at this time, we would also like to uh, recognize her sponsor, Ryan Lindsay. He could not be here this afternoon, but um, we are very proud of the hard work and the time that they have put in. Thank you for your medalist winners. The Missouri Skills USA Championship has been called the showcase of technical education. The Missouri Schools USA Championships recognizes career and technical education students who excel in their occupational areas as well as leadership development activities. Uh, these are all an integral part of the Skills USA program in the classroom, classroom. We would like to recognize some of our Sykes and High School students that represented well at the state competition. Uh, we had people, students that received first, second, and third place. Our first state winners that qualified for nationals. First, we have Georgia Aiders Community Service, first place. Veronica Hanson, Community Service, first place. Dylan Heaton, TV Production, first place. Ben Mack, TV Production and Written Tech, first place. <laughs> Hannah Plechek, Early Childhood and Written Tech, first place.
Braxton Hausman, screen printing, third place. Matt Gillian, auto radio production, third place. Samantha Myers, Audio Radio Production, third place. At this time, we'd like to uh, recognize the sponsors of this group Dee Beidler. <laughs> Stephen Beidler. Andy Kate. <laughs> Brian Henson. Oh, Andy's here. I Sorry, Andy. I believe Mr. Henson is on vacation. And Gloria Houston. Just like to say thank you to all of you. Every year you go and you make us proud and you represent Sykes and R6 very well. And again, sponsors, we thank you for your time and your effort that you put into these young adults. Thank you all very much. Over the course of the year. 
and we have 100% of those kids that wound up with a 90% or above on their daily attendance at the end of the school year. So um, really saw our attendance for those kids that a lot of times found themselves sent out of school the year prior, um, being able to stay in school. And I think that was what resulted <coughs> in the academic achievement for the group also. Um, hey Alicia, is that yes. mostly like third and fourth graders? Do you have many first and second graders? We have, no, that's all four grades. Okay. Um, we did have quite a few third graders in there this year. Um, it was actually mostly second and third. We had one, two, three, four, five of those were first graders and only two of <coughs> fourth graders. So, um, also looked at our math and reading Ames Web. I looked at their fall and spring benchmark scores and 100% of the kids made improvements in both math and reading fluency. Um, so for, like I said, slowly but surely getting there. <laughs> um, also just Ames Web reading data in general. Um, we did something a little different for our spring um, RCBM, which is the assessment that measures their reading fluency. We set goals for every single student in the school. They were given their goal, um, I think about a month before the school year, or a month, about a month before we did the spring benchmarking. And we had 304 out of 321 students assessed to meet that goal. So we had 95% of them meet their goal. So we're gonna do the same thing for math next year. <laughs> um, as far as our MCOMP, which is just basic math fluency, we had 96% of our students um, in the school make improvements from fall to spring. And for MCAP, which is the problem solving end of Ames Web, we had 91% of our students make improvements in those assessments. What have you been looking at going forward? Do you, do you see any of these kids graduating, if you will, and new kids taking their place, you know? For all stars? Mm -hmm. In your group? Oh, yes. I hope so. <laughs> um, with it being as new as it was, because, you know, we didn't start it until fairly late in the school year last year, right. um, so this was, this was our first full year. We had two students. Two students start, no, one student that started at the beginning of the year that did not finish because of behavior, because he had had so much trouble with his behavior even in that program that he was not allowed to continue participating in that program. So did he go to the alternative school? No. 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 Um, and it wasn't so much at school that he was having the problems, but that group also went to the church and he just could not, I think without this school adults there with him who just could not control his behavior. So um, we didn't allow him to come back. But he he um, hung on to about the last month of school. Now I will say I have his data included in this and he was <coughs> the student in our school that had the most system. So <coughs> But yes, to answer your original question, I do see some of these. Honestly, and I think I mentioned this this time last year, some of these kids, um, especially some of our third graders that are in now, were put in because they had the behavior issues last year, well, the 14, 15 school year. And the program, you know, even some of the parents have really stepped up in the area of responsibility because of the communication, because of the program. So some of these kids will probably exit the program just because now they've got a stable home environment as well, and so they won't need it. So when they exit, will that give, give room to others then? Yes. And I mentioned, I think, last month that we are going to try to do things just a little bit different next year and that we will still only be able to service the 20 kids that we were going to set up for, but we're going to try to do them on two different days, so we just have two groups of 10. But until we get more volunteers, we're not going to be able to grow that number. Thank you, Alicia. Ms. Okay. Um, since school's been out, uh, we have met with 
all four grade levels for math and three levels for ELA. We will meet with on Thursday. We'll meet with fourth grade. What we've done um, during those meetings is kind of continue our curriculum planning. Um, we've looked over the, G, the new GLEs and kind of seen, you know, the crosswalks of you know what, what we are doing now, what we're going to be expected to do. Um, pacing the skills, uh, creating formative assessments along the way. Um, they go right along with our um, collaborative works grant with through math and special education, and then also PLCs um, for ELA. So we've done that both uh, with Ms. Scott and I have done for ELA, and Ms. Sheeter and I have done that with math. Um, teachers did a great deal of work, and they were very appreciative of the time that they really collaborate, and I really feel good about where we're going. Um, we purchased um, additional materials agreed upon by the teachers, and we submitted that to central office to be purchased. That has to do with the, the um, focus plan grant. Um, like one of the things that we're doing with the Ames Web, Ames Web is good, but Ames Web does not specify specific skill deficits. It can show growth, and you can track progress, but as far as exactly what the problem is, it really doesn't. It doesn't say. And so we kind of think that we need to. We're going to go back. We're going to start implementing DRA again because I, I don't. DRA worked really well when I was in the classroom, and we kind of talked together as a group over there. And we think that DRA would be something, so we are going to order a DRA kit so we can work on those because that way we can really see exactly what the school deficit is. Because it's, to me, it's not enough just to track progress. I don't know exactly what is it. What is it that you don't get? Um, the PLC committee has been identified, and we received the tentative dates for the PLC transfer <laughs> this year. Um, I met with Melanie Needling, our PLC consultant from SEMO last week. Uh, we completed an initial school programs inventory on Matthews. Um, this kind of served as a background as to how she can best assist us in beginning the PLC, PLC process. Um, the first PLC meeting for administrators is July 7th, so I'll go to that and I'll find out more. With me being completely new to PLCs, I've talked to Rodney, I've talked to Alicia, but until I go to the training, there's, and I read a book, but you know, until I know, I'm kind of just fishing the dark right now. Um, our PBS program um, will be moving to Tier 2 next year with more training and supports for the teachers and students. Right now, we have four people from our building that are at Tantera at the Summer PBS Institute. Um, and I've, I've gone, um, I was over PBS when I was one of the assistant principals at the fifth and sixth grade center. One of the best uh, PD opportunities. So hopefully they'll come back with some good resources and ideas. Um, we have two after school partnerships with churches, the Wesley Methodist Church across the street and then also Shane Baker's Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wesley Methodist opted not to continue their um, program into the summer. Shady Acres expressed an interest to continue it on into the summer, so they're actually coming on Wednesday nights there too. And it's not only is it the 12 kids that were initially part of the program, but now they've got all these siblings coming too because they just didn't want to tell them no. You know, when the school year gets back, when we move, we might have to tweak that a little bit. But right now, we just have a slew of kids, and it's really neat. What was once like a queue is now like three. <laughs> so it's neat. Um, and the last thing, um, Terra Nova scores are back, and Matthews did show some, some improvement. You know, I, in saying that, I realize Terra Nova scores are not aligned to the new GLEs, the new standards exactly, but they are a measure of growth. And even though they're not completely aligned, it usually, I mean, progress is progress. And, I, and I've never seen us do really awful on the Terra Nova and do wonderful on the math test. You know, so I mean, usually if you don't do great on the Terra Nova, it kind of, I'm not saying, I, I don't know what the math test is going to look like. I can just go to pray and know how hard we worked. But saying that, um, for Terra Nova, first grade improved in reading and math, and then second grade showed improvement in reading, math, science, and social studies. So, you know, for, and, and when I told the teachers, it's, you know, they've just been under so much stress. You know, it's not fun being in a focus school. It's not having year after year, but it's not feeling like you're getting there no matter how hard you're trying. I was meeting with them, and when the Terra Nova scores came in, right when we were having these meetings, and so I was like, hey guys, I got the Terra Nova scores. And I'm trying to be all up there like, don't tell me it's awful. I'm like, no, they're not, they're not. Look at this, look how great they are. They're like, wow, I said, see, you're great, you're awesome. So it's really good news that we needed. So hopefully we'll keep getting this kind of stuff. That's all I've got. Questions for Crystal? They don't do social and science in first grade. They just do that in second grade. They do right. social studies. Oh, they do. They do. They do. They, do. Okay. they didn't show. Her, you know, they didn't show. I think it was like a two two point drop mm -hmm. in one. It was very very minor. 
Yeah, we, we talked about that. The first grade was very upset about that. They weren't happy. And with them, they don't have textbooks, and so we pull a lot of supplemental stuff. And so we just talked about how, how can we supplement that? How can we tie that into some things that we're doing in ELA? Because, you know, time is of the essence, and so much time needs to be spent on reading. So we talked about that. I think we've got some ideas going for that one. That's great. Well, thank you, Crystal. Uh, next on the agenda is the Career Wilder Report. Ms. Olifield. Uh, you'll see there, uh, this is the 2015-2016 career ladder report. We have a total of 167 teachers that participated. Uh, stage 1, 29. Stage 2, 37. And stage 3, 101. You can see there that actually the number of hours that are required is 8,595. And the total number of hours that were logged by our teachers was 13,217. Um, this is a cost, was a cost to our district this, this year of $338,250. And then down at the bottom, not the bottom, but this bottom underneath this, this chart here, you see it's broken down into where exactly those hours were logged. Uh, you can see that the bulk of our hours were with student tutoring and other student contact. So it kind of breaks down exactly. There's curriculum development, professional development, and then other activities. Then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the estimate for next school year. We're estimating that a total of 192 <coughs> teachers will participate. Uh, overall, 19 in stage one, 50 stage two, and 123 in stage three for a cost to the district of 396,750. Uh, just one more thing I wanna to bring to your attention. Out of the 167, Teachers that participated in career ladder, only one did not participate that was eligible to participate out of all of that. So, anybody have any questions? Thank you, Shannon. Next on the agenda is the student discipline data, the last one for the school year, May of 2016. And within your packet on VDOCS, you'll see that we have each and every building listed. We have the description of the incident and also whether it is an ISS or an OSS uh, discipline. Any questions on discipline data that's presented for you? Next we have the communication update. And I don't know if our communication director back there wants to share. I'll, I'll share. <laughs> uh, on the lines of communication, I do want to tell you that, uh, she can tweet it out. Yeah. Uh, I do want to, to mention to you that this, the last two weeks, we have had the corporate games going on and done fairly well. I know the volleyball plays first. Uh, trivia with Mr. Mays at the helm there plays first. We had golf uh, plays first, and we've had several others. So that's been a, a good, uh, good uh, interaction with our community the last couple weeks. Kind of hard on some of our bodies, but I think that we all <laughs> we're, we're done with that. In the communication report, notice that uh, Sarah had mentioned that of a new website. Uh, Gabbert Communications has been selected to take that over. Actually, next week we're going to have some training going on with our administrative staff, and that will go live as of August 1st. <coughs> uh, the process began back in first part of second se seven semester, excuse me and we interviewed several groups and with that we came up with Gabbert Communication. Also notice there that Sarah had mentioned about a district app, we're looking at that as well. That's been a big topic lately that a lot of people want an app on their phones so they can readily access information and we're looking into that as well. Where is Gabbert Communication? They're from Texas, correct Sarah? They're from Texas if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Sarah, saw, Sarah saw those that group at a MOSPRA MASA conference that we attended last spring and uh, they had a very good presentation and we decided to call them down and when they presented to us it was outstanding. We had about four or five groups come in and talk with us. Most of the groups were pretty well outside of our area. I think all of them were either Indiana, Illinois, Ohio. I think Ohio. So we had several from outside of our area. But a lot of them do work with our schools in southeast Missouri. <coughs> They're familiar with us. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. 
Because I think one of the biggest problems right now is just updated information. So yes. it sounds like you all have a plan to have people like sports, <coughs> like sports schedules and things like that. Because I know people come out of town. That's what we're discussing. That's what we're working on. And hopefully next week when we start going through the website training, we'll have an opportunity to key in on keeping this thing up to date. Because I think that's been the biggest complaint right now with our website. I think we still have information on there from last year, 2015 graduation. And so I think it, it needs to be updated. Yes, it's not the easiest website to, to new. Our, This new one is very um, to use very easily navigated. It will link, all of our um, calendars will link to our Outlook calendars. So anytime they update the board calendar, it's automatically going to link up to. So I mean, that in and of itself will be more efficient than having someone have to go in and edit each calendar. That was a big part of the discussion when we interviewed these groups is can it sync up with our Outlook calendar? Because that's what we use. And so once it's set in there, it'll sync with our, our web page and be easily transferable to that web page. Um, in addition to some other information that Sarah presented, there's some information down there as far as who is looking at our Facebook, uh, male, female, uh, the, the places that they come from, and so on and so forth, time of day. So we're trying to key on those areas, make sure we get that information in a timely manner so that they're able to view that and keep informed about our district. Yes. Questions on communication update? Next we have the board policy consideration and this is simply for consideration for the board the next month or even two months that will be brought back again for the board to review. Uh, the first policy that is brought to us by MSBA as proposed by MSBA is board Excuse me, BCA board organizational meetings. This has to do with that of selecting a delegate and an alternate uh, to the board. Currently, right now, it's the president and vice president who is selected. During our reorganizational meeting, instead of doing that, we would select somebody to be that. And what a delegate basically does is, is it go between between the board of education and MSBA and gets information from MSBA prior to coming to the board. Also has a voice with MSBA as far as any type of educational issues that they are talking about. Our delegates and alternate can have a say in that. We have board policy B, CCA, MSBA delegate and alternate. Again, same type of thing. It's cleaning up the policy to basically state what a delegate and alternate does do and clarifies that. Uh, we have EBAB, which is hazardous materials. This updates this policy, and I can say right now that we're ahead of this game. We are with this, above this game as far as what we do as a school district, but it includes things as asbestos, chemical hazards, lead, and also that emergency plans. Uh, we met here a couple weeks ago about our, our EOP, and we're looking at right now updating that EOP so it's more current and in compliance with that policy. GBEBC, which is criminal background checks, it basically puts into the policy that we currently have consequences. So if somebody is found to be uh, harmful or violent through that background check, then we have a consequence such as termination or not allow that individual to be interviewed. IGAEB, which is teaching about human sexuality, uh, this is in line with House Bill 501, which is, says a current law pertaining to instruction about human sexuality to add requirements that schools also teach about sexual predators, including online sexual predators, teach about safe internet use, and encourage students to report inappropriate behavior. Uh, that information has been placed into that particular policy. JECA E. A, excuse me, which is a mission of students. This has to do with military students and families and as far as those kids uh, residing and attending our school system. Yeah, take like a community like Waynesville, that, that's, that's a, a, a big issue there. Um, however, we don't have that right. much, but it could occur and we need to be prepared sure. for that. JECC, assignment of students at grade level and classes. 
This is to remove North Central Association from that wording and change it to advanced ed. North Central used to be our accreditation group. They used to be the one that used to come in and do that for us, uh, and that has been taken over by advanced ed. JHCB, which immunization of students, this is in compliance with Senate Bill 341, which requires preschools, daycare centers, nursery schools to notify parents or guardians of children in those schools. They can ask whether any child in the preschool, daycare center, or nursery school has an immunization exemption on file. And this is something that came out late last year, and we are adding that to our board policy. JHG, Reporting and Investigating Child Abuse and Neglect. This updates the, the particular policy to state that basically everybody is a mandated reporter, all the way from, we're talking about maintenance worker, bus drivers, all the way up to the superintendent are mandated to report that information to the child's, to the children's division. Will everybody receive training? Yes, they that? do at the beginning of the year. Everyone receives that training. Uh, Ms. Kiefer will go out and would you mind, Kim, could you get that door? We have somebody there. Thank you. They do receive training. But Ms. Keeper goes around the buildings and, and updates everyone on the process and uh, how to deal with those situations and how to report those situations. KKB, which is audio and visual recording. Uh, this has to do with the teacher preparation program, the Missouri Teacher Preparation Program in that some teachers are required to video their lessons with the students in those classes. Um, I was speaking to Mr. Mays the other day. I don't know that we've had anybody that has done this because they do have a no video part of that, uh, but it's for the board's consideration to review that information. Uh, in addition to that, they put in something here dealing with the use of unmanned aircraft systems, drones, that was something that was brought to our attention last year during the football season. We did have one that was flying through. Uh, I, I think it's important that we do have something in our policy that states on how to address that because that it is becoming a regular thing with our, our community and, and the people around. <laughs> Lastly, to rescind board policy IKAD, which is dealing with parent conferences. Uh, MSB has recommended that we rescind this basically because parent conferences is an administrative function. Questions on board policies for consideration? Okay, moving into requiring action. Uh, first item is request permission to schedule executive session to discuss personnel matters. So moved. Second. So if there's any discussion or no, I guess we need a roll call vote. Ms. Durick? Yes. Mr. Kronbeck? Yes. Mr. Lane? Yes. Ms. Lane? Yes. Mr. Tanner? Yes. Second item on requiring action is consideration of A plus candidates. And Ms. Hollifield? Uh, this, is, uh, this is a list of all the students that uh, met the requirements for the A plus program. That will be uh, grad that have graduated from sites in R6. So I'm recommending that you. So move, move, set. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next is a consideration of supplemental vision and orientation and mobility services, Mr. Crater. Hey folks, we have uh, we need to put out a bid for uh, supplemental services. The gal that's been providing services for the last few years is uh, moving on out of the area, um, so we had to put it out there. And we we have one bid. It's from an organization called New Outlook. Uh, Aaron Brewer is the person that provides the services, and these these are that this is agreement with the cost for that. Um, I guess the good news is there isn't any about these therapies that are kind of expensive. Is that um, Right now, we're only talking about two students a week, so even though know, the cost per hour um, seems like a lot, we're only talking about a couple people at the moment, though, that can change with a new school year. So basically, this is similar to what we've had in the past. There's not a lot of change on it. We just need to bring it to you for approval. Any questions? Who was providing the service? 
Pam Arbiter from Jackson. Is she moving or? Yeah, her husband got a job at uh, Lee Summit. They're <coughs> moving at the end of June. Right now, a lot of people that provide this service, is there? No, there's not. Fortunately, really, uh, it was a connection to Pam had, or we probably wouldn't have this, this bid. I make a motion we accept this bid. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, we have the consideration of the capital projects transfer. Ms. Portman. This is an annual event uh, that I ask the Board of Education to do. As the board will um, remember, we don't have a tax levy that is assigned to our fund for capital uh, projects expenditures. So the state allows, um, this has several long names, uh, it's a 7% times the state adequacy target, which is set by the, at the state, times the district's weighted average daily attendance is how the calculation is made. The projected amount that we will be allowed to do for the FY16 year that we are concluding is $1,419,962. In order to make that transfer to cover allowable expenditures, it has to be in our board minutes annually that the board resolves to allow me the permission to do that transfer. <coughs> Uh, the, the resolution re reads, resolved to transfer up to the maximum allowed by section 165.001 of Missouri State Statute. The transfer will cover allowable expenditures <coughs> for the 15-16 school year, and the re remaining monies will be used to cover upcoming renovation and equipment upgrade projects in the district with work estimated to begin in the summer of 16. The reason behind the resolution is they don't want you to build your fund for balances if you do not have a plan. And a perfect example is last Wednesday night you approved for safety reasons the stadium poles. This is something that will help us to move money from our operating account over the capital projects to cover those types of expenditures. So I'm asking the board to adopt this resolution today. We will move, once we do the annual secretary and board report in July, we will come back to you in August and tell you exactly the amount we move. We don't always move the maximum. It's just what is the most beneficial to the district on paper. I move we adopt the resolution as read. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next on the agenda is a consideration of the office supply bid. John Seiler of Central Supply has sent the following recommendations. We have officesupply.com, 11 items at $1,301.11. Station, standard stationary 55 items at $8,382.71. Office Depot, five items at $657.64. And School Specialty at 17 items at $667.21. The total bid is $11,008.67. That's the total for the 2017 bid. No, all at once. I make a motion to approve the office bid as read. Second. Any discussion? I think it's nice that they actually don't, that they break it out and let you yeah. buy certain items. I mean, I'm surprised. Well, it is nice. He gets the overall bid on those items and able to select the best price. What's amazing is the difference that some people charge for, like, the staples. Yes. Okay. More discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next on the agenda is consideration of facility rentals rate pursuant to policy uh, KG. Uh, we are required to annually review the rental rates of our facilities that is included within your packet. This, these rates were developed back in 2004, I believe. However, I feel like that they are still competitive and I am recommending that we keep the same rates that we've had the last 12 years. And if we accept that recommendation. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Next is consideration of project I learned purchase. Uh, this is a single source purchase, so we have had posted on our website and in the local newspaper um, the required documentation since the iPads are only available from Apple Incorporated. Uh, this was adopted as part of the budget last June as a continuation of our replacement um, cycle. These would be new iPads. It's um, distributed to incoming freshmen and new cases for those as well. Uh, the recommendation is to purchase 270 iPad Air to Wi-Fi with 65 gigabytes. Uh, this also includes a three-year Apple Care, which we purchased. Uh, that's basically a service agreement for repairs. Uh, the total cost for the 270 iPads would be $154,710. Do you want this done separately, Mr. Williams? The iPads and the cases separately. You want the motions done separately? I think we have in the past done it all together, okay. but I think that are they two separate vendors? They're two. Se no, in this case, they're both Apple. It was all one bid. Yeah, and then we'll do one bid. Yeah, there were two different proposals. And then, in addition um, to the 270 iPads, the recommendation is to purchase 270 protective cases for those iPad Airs. Uh, for the two cost for 270 cases is $13,486.50. It's a recommendation of the administration to accept this bid. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I um, think. Go ahead. I just had one question. I, I noticed that in the paper. Are, are we required to advertise that locally if we know there's there's no local vendors? Our board policy says when there's a single source vendor, those are the steps that we have to apply. So we're telling the public that we realize that we have a competitive bid process in place via board policy, but in this case, there's not multiple competitors. So right. this just keeps us in compliance with board policy. Okay. Just curious. I think that if we're gonna continue spending this kind of money on iPads, that we need to have a discussion as a board on the project I love. Because we've spent like 1.6 million so far on iPads. And I think that the board needs to discuss the program. Are we seeing, I don't know what the intention was of the iLearn program. Um, I don't know what the thinking was behind it, but um, are we seeing any benefits? What are the negatives to it? Um, Can we just do that February? No. Was it that for the fifth or the... Uh... We didn't approve it, but I, I understand what you're saying. You just like clarification as far as how it began, what was the rationale behind the decision with Project I Learn, the pros and cons. We can come back in August and do a uh, a, a follow up on that. Be more than happy to. Because I, you know, I, there's a lot of negatives to this. I think there's a lot of. Um, issues that have gone on especially in the junior high school with this and if we're considering i know the 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 talk has been going down to the fifth and sixth grade center i don't know if that's meaning you want to um have every child have one like they do at the junior high and high school it's or if it just means if it just means that we're just putting them in the classroom but i just think that there needs to be in not a discussion of having coming in here with like a, um, you know, a, a PowerPoint of, or a showing projects that were done in the school or whatever, but like a discussion of this is what we're seeing in the schools, this is what I'm hearing, this is what the evidence is showing, look at the scores, are, are we seeing an increase, are we seeing a decrease, our discipline and that kind of thing. So I think well, that. I, I think we were trying to do that in our, in our last, in our last meeting, however, we can break it down. We can show you that discipline has gone down in certain areas. We can show you the results. We can show you also the negative aspects of it, too, because there are. We realize that, and we're trying to take those negatives and work on it. For example, with our seventh grade, and Jody can, can speak to this better than I can, but we're trying to look at basically educating them on how to use the iPad, and we're not going to send them home as well. Right. What we're doing is we, are, we have decided we want to place more of an emphasis on digital citizenship with our students because we realize 
you know, this is a powerful device. You know, the world is at your fingertips. And so we are going to be implementing a curriculum in our advisory classes with all of our children. But our seventh graders won't take them long until after, probably sometime after Labor Day. And Ms. Edwards, our technology instructional coach, has already put that together and done phenomenal work with that. And that will be taught school-wide to all of our kids during advisory. There's quizzes and things that they will have to take as a part of that so that they understand what it's about. And not just the iPad, because we see it as our responsibility to teach them, you know, all of our kids have phones, you know, that have internet access and stuff, so that we are educating them about the importance and the power behind this device and what you can do and things that are dangerous. It's just part of our job, so we're going to but Take we, a look at that. thank you, Judy. I'm sorry. No, you're not, I'm sorry. But we will bring that back to you in August. We're more than happy to start off here with a, a presentation. Thanks, Nancy. Hey, I wanted to mention uh, in May, the foundation gave uh, the school district $30,000 for the I Learn project. So they did. They did. Very appreciative of that. recommendation to the purchase of Yes. We would be on motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Any more discussion? I apologize. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, next item is approval of non-tenured staff for the 2016-17 school year. I think you realize that we did this a couple months back. However, we did have an individual that's listed in your packet that went through and was able to get completed certification. Uh, with that, uh, we do need to go ahead and recommend him for approval for the next school year. Next, we have the ratification of bills we paid through May of 2016. It's a recommendation to accept the bills. We accept the bills. Do we need a roll call vote? And a motion to move the second. So moved uh, with roll call vote. Mr. Williams, may I point out something? Due to some of our um, board members not being here this afternoon, we have two board members this month who will need to abstain. Yes, we will. So, so we have, we're we, going to need. We will either need to make a recommendation with the Ferguson bill removed and take a vote, and then make a second motion with. that I, I'm not sure, or we need to table this to the 27th. I mean, as long as they're approved, it's just we have okay. Quorum, right? you, you have a quorum, even yeah. if you have abstentions, you you, so can, you, you still have a quorum, so you can still conduct business. You don't have to have, you have to have a quorum for the meeting. I don't think you have to have a quorum for one. Okay. You have to have a majority for the vote. Okay. So, so we, we just want to make sure we... I'll double check that and we have to bring it up at the... We can do it again in 27, but I, I, think, All right. I think everybody can abstain and needs to abstain. Okay. Thank you. Executive session May 10th, 2016. We have the acceptance of employee retirement, which is Lisa Vaughn. We have acceptance of employee resignation, Eric Voorhees and Brent Taylor. The sale of surplus property, pursuant to policy DNAP. And we have the approval of handbooks, which is uh, the SETC Adult Student Handbook, Library and Media Services Handbook. Health, health Services Handbook and Practical Nursing Student Handbook. Motion to approve the consent agenda items. 
Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>